Hello everyone, welcome back. This is KJ4YZI. You're watching Ham Radio Concepts. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because YouTube doesn't like to alert you anymore when I'm making a video. So today we have from TID Radio, the TDH5. Now this is just not one radio. In fact, if you look at the Amazon link in my description of the video, you will see two radios, four batteries, four belt clips, two speaker microphones, programming cables, and whatever else it comes with for $87. Now when you pair that with the new fee cost for the GMR, GMRS license from the FCC, which is now $35, I bought my GMRS license a couple of years ago for $70. And it covers your entire family. So I am WRCU707 and my wife is WRCU707 Mobile 2 or Unit 2 or whatever you want to call it but it covers the entire family. So just you and your wife or you and your better half or your kid or whatever can get onto GMRS with a programmable GMRS radio and extra batteries for $87. That is pretty cheap. And you guys have been asking me, you're tired of seeing videos of $700 radios. You keep putting in the comments, I want cheap. Well, here it is, cheap enough that anybody can get into GMRS radio and it's delivered in two days. So let me show you right now the TID Radio TDH5 set in this box on Ham Radio Concepts. Ham Radio Concepts is brought to you by HamRadioPrep.com. It's never been easier to learn about Ham Radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit HamRadioPrep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, HamRadioPrep.com. All right, so let me open this up here and show you what you're gonna get for $87, okay? And I'm gonna start with this. The quick manual, quick start, does say for Windows operations that you can use this on Chirp to program your radio. And a lot of people like using Chirp. So there is the manufacturer software or Chirp, and that is Windows. I do not see any reference to Mac at the moment, okay? And then the drivers, it gives you the websites and everything here. I'm gonna give you a disclaimer in a second about programming on GMRS, so stay tuned, so keep listening. And if you are curious, TID Radio in the past had sent me the Bluetooth programmer, which will allow you to program various radios from Baofeng, TID, and Radiotity on Bluetooth via your app on your phone, no cable needed. It's a little $27 programmer. It looks like this, plugs in the side. The link is in the description to the video and where to purchase that, okay? And uh, that's another thing that's cool by TID Radio. So um, this, the user manual, listen, a lot of us guys, we don't use the manual, okay? But I want you to read the manual on this. And the reason is, is because GMRS operates a little bit differently. I can program a Baofeng or Radiotity or even a Luton with, or a TID with my eyes closed. I mean, I can go through it, navigate it, one, two, three, I'm on the air. There's a little bit different to this. This operates just a tad bit differently. This is not a standard UV5R type radio. GMRS is sectioned and allocated for, for 22 channels and then eight repeater channels for duplex operation. That encompasses some FRS and some GMRS, some you know, low power and high power. You gotta check that out, okay? Not hard to understand, just something that's a little bit different. Now, here's what you get, okay? Two of the radios, we'll start with this, two radios. Each of these radios have a battery on the back, okay? Then you get two additional radios, I mean, two additional uh, batteries here. These are 7.4 volt, 1500 milliamp hour batteries. So right there you have four batteries, okay? Four batteries. And again, the GMRS license encompasses your entire family. So you could do two things. You could buy two more individual radios, not a pack like this and have two extra batteries. Or you could use two people here and have two extra batteries. You know, it all comes down to you're watching this because of radio communication. You're watching this channel because of what's happening in the world, what you've heard about in the years past on all our YouTube videos, and you think, man, this is a great idea to keep in contact with my family, friends, or just for emergencies. That's why you're watching this. You're not watching this because you're bored and having two extra batteries are great, okay? Now, on top of that, four belt clips. Now that is interesting that they give you four belt clips. Maybe they thought, hey, these are like eight cents. So you just take the screws off on the back, you put the belt clip on, if you break one, you got a spare. That's pretty cool. Four extra belt clips, or two for the radios and two extra. 
Then you got two lanyards. Why didn't they give us four lanyards? I don't know. Okay, then they're gonna give two of the speaker microphones, which uh, resemble very much like the Abri or the Rotivus. I mean, these are standard, they just put their own names on them. That, to be honest with you. They have the lapel clip on the back. They have the standard Kenwood or Baofeng style two pin, 2.5 millimeter and 3.5 millimeter for the side of the radio. Goes right into here. You open the rubber cap, you put your speaker mic in here and away you go, okay? Two of those. Now back in the day, when we had Baofengs and other radios, that was the big thing, was to buy a Baofeng, came with the battery, the belt clip, the lanyard. Then you had to buy the programming cable. Then you had to buy the external speaker mic. Then you had to buy an extra charger. If you didn't want to charge it with the drop-in, you had the, well, check this out. They give you two of these cables. And these are, th so this charges via USB-C. So for those who are saying, let's give a round of applause. Yay, a round of applause, because I, I read thousands of comments that nobody ever wants to use micro USB. USB-C is the name of the game in 2022. There it is. And they went one better. They even have USB-C double. So you can plug it in to the wall wart or USB adapter here and charge two radios at the same time. Or you could charge one radio and your cell phone. Or you could use the other one, charge two radios and have this for two cell phones. There you go, enough said. USB-C, you asked for it, at least TID Radio listened instead of putting micro USB on it, okay? I, trust me, these all come from comments. You say it, I'm answering right now, okay? And another one of these here. Now, for $87, I want your comment right now. Do you think that is a good deal? I do, because I could get, you know, have two, I mean, look, I have other, look at this. I have other GMRS radios. I mean, I have them all over the place. All right, I am WRCU 707. If you ever hear me on the, the East Coast United States on the net or on the Fort Pierce machine, um, that's what I use. But so, so right there, I'm gonna show you a couple things to make this video quicker on the operation of this. Now I have already used one of these on the local repeater and talked with a couple people in Fort Pierce and they said it sounded great. So the name of the game here, if you're wondering, is not going to be a Chinese radio versus a professional GMRS. I haven't heard anybody, well, I've heard one guy who really did not sound good. I don't know what he was using, but you know, th there's very minimal setup that you have to do with this and very minimal programming. Let me talk about the programming I teased you with a second ago. Guys, this is not ham radio. This is GMRS radio and I love it. But the fact is there's only 22 GMRS channels allocated by the FCC. And there are an additional eight duplex channels, which are called repeater channels. They're usually they're marked RPT. Now, that gives you a combination of 30. The only real thing that's changing with those eight repeater channels is the CTCSS or DCS tone. Now, with that being said, I could turn this on, go to repeater channel two, which is 462.575 with an offset plus five megahertz, that's 467.575. And I can set the tone, which I did, right in the menu of the radio to 141.3. I'm on Fort Pierce. Now there's only three repeaters in my area. I don't think I need to program my radio. I will probably never use this programming cable. What I'm trying to tell you is, back in the day, programming a Baofeng, and even today, is a big deal because there could be tens of thousands of repeaters around you. But I've seen a lot of people making videos on the a programming a GMRS made easy. There's just not that much that's required to program it, okay? Now, if now with that being said, you can watch some of my other videos on GMRS and it will show you, you know, the FRS channels that are mixed in with the GMRS, okay? So some of the channels on here, I think it's eight through 14, are low power. And those because those are shared with the blister pack radios that you get from Walmart that are made by Midland or Cobra, whoever, and they're FRS, they're limited to a half a watt with a non-detachable antenna. Now this antenna with a little Allen key can be loosened and unscrewed. And I'm going to test the power with this because I've seen this on another video. I wanna make sure that the power output on this is close to what it says, but I'm going to use a brand new 17 
$1,000 service monitor to give you an accurate output level of this radio. But from me to Fort Pierce, that's pretty good. For GMRS, okay? Sometimes these radios, you know, they, they claim five watts, four watts. We're gonna find out with that $17,000 analyzer what this thing actually puts out on the output. However, enough of my rant. Let me show you some of the things and make a contact real quick on GMRS, and then we'll get into some of the things that you'll need to know to operate one of these, and then the power test, and we'll see what you think. All right, so I'm gonna give a fast test real quick. This is roughly Vero Lake Estates, and the repeater is in St. Lucie County. Now, the repeater does pretty good. But I'm going to show you on this real quick how easy and plain old Jane old it is on GMRS. Ready? WRCU 707 testing. Let's see if anybody comes back. Okay, this is just straight up handheld stock antenna. Let's see if anybody's around. It's Mother's Day, you know. I should be in there with my wife. I already treated her for Mother's Day. Don't worry. WRC is 707 for radio tech. Okay, very good. Just as long as the audio is okay. I know I'm in Vero Lake Estates, so I'm a good 25, 30 miles from the repeater on a handheld. Roger. Roger. Yep, copy that. Yeah, your audio is good. It's time to just, you know, jump off from the repeater, so that's where the snow's coming in. Otherwise, you're doing good. Very good. Happy Mother's Day to all. And 73 WRC 707 is clear, Vero Beach. So it's working, okay? Good audio? That's a pretty good deal. All right, 73 is WRBN, 985 is gonna be uh, on the side here in Port St. Lucie. Port St. Lucie, so now the thing about this is there's a net on Sundays, okay? And uh, Sunday evenings, I think it's seven, is the, the local regional net, and then eight is the uh, international or the uh, nationwide net, rather. And you'll hear people checking in from Delaware, New York, wherever, depending on where your system is linked, okay? Pretty cool. We did it in, in ham radio. We, we have repeaters that are linked and stuff, but GMRS has come a long way, okay? GMRS has grown exponentially in the last five years. And to be able to get a radio like this, or a couple radios with all the accessories for 87 bucks, I think is a really good deal. I'm gonna also show you one of the radios I have that's in a video that's in my room, still in the box, the Ushan or Oshan, KG-1000, 50-watt mobile. That's a pretty cool radio. For now, though, you may not want to invest $400 in a radio. You might just want to go in with a couple like this and a $35 license, and away you go. So, so far, I didn't give you a test between my radio and that radio. I asked a complete stranger on how it sounded 30, probably 30 miles away with a handheld. You heard it right there. Sounded pretty good. Okay, this is brand new. No, I didn't buy this. <laughs> this is what I use at work for professional LMR type radio systems. I'm gonna make a video on this Freedom R8000C service monitor, but what I'm gonna do in this video, this has never been turned on. I'm going to plug in a cable, not into my Bird 43, not into an MFJ, not into a Daiwa. I'm gonna use this, and we're gonna get the most accurate representation of the output power on GMRS. And that will conclude every other power test ever on YouTube forever and ever. Amen. So what I have here is the radio set to channel one with just an adapter and a piece of ABR Industries coax, which is N to the service monitor and N here with an adapter N to SMA. I could not find a SMA to N male to go right into the front of the radio. So I'm using a piece of coax here, which I use for testing that has a really low loss at this length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. I'm just going to give you, we're not going to go through anything about the modulation or, or, or anything other than the power output. Okay. And the reason why I do that is because I'm going to open a lot of cans of worms. So let me go into here. Okay. Now, a lot of times, go like this. A lot of times uh, we use DBM in uh, different LMR organizations or, or systems for the power output. 
And then we also use watts. So I'm gonna show you the DBM here and the watts when I key just on channel one. This is claimed to be a five watt radio. We're gonna see what this actually gives us as I push this button. Are you ready? Let's see if I get this in the, the display here so that you don't think I'm cheating. Here we go, ready? 3.15 watts. If you see down here, that's roughly 35 point, 34.9 dBm, okay? 3 watts, 3.15 watts, roughly, right here. All right, now that's into a dummy load that's into this, you know, the, the dummy load's built into the service monitor, so you can transmit up to 150 watts in here from a wide frequency range. And we're not gonna get into this. I'm gonna show you a couple things this will do in another video. Um, this is a lot better than the IFR Com 120B that I use and the IFR 1200, which is way old school if you remember those. I am not the expert at the service monitor, but I know how to use one, and this one was new. Uh, we just bought it, so I'm running it through tests and just seeing what I can do with it. But anyways, um, that's what the power, now, Three watts, right? Look, 3.17, 3.2, okay. So it's not a five watt radio. Not really, you know, a lot of times the numbers are over exaggerated, but uh, it is about three watts. And uh, you know, you're only gonna do plus or minus maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2 watts with the cable versus the HT antenna that you have on the top of it. So not bad, you just heard me talk to a repeater on GMRS in Fort Pierce. That's about 25 to 30 miles from my house. So three watts is definitely usable. Um, but if you're, you know, and, and to be fair, you're only gonna notice an increase if you double your power. What is it, uh, three dB, you get a half an S unit. You know, so going to six watts, you'd have to double it to go to six to make any difference. So if you're looking for one that's actually gonna do four watts or five watts, you're really not gonna notice it. Now, to go from three to six to 12 to 18, that would be a big step up in power. But I just wanted to show you because in the past, people have yelled at me and have told me, oh, you can't use that. Well, here you go. You have nothing to say about the actual power on my test other than it is 3.15 watts on a five watt claim, but that's okay, it still works. So on this radio and most GMRS radios, you have 22 channels, okay, there's more, but I'll show you. 22 channels, that's one through seven, then eight through 14 and 15 through 22. Now eight through 14 are limited to a half a watt, 500 milliwatts, because that's shared with FRS. Then you have you know one through seven, which are uh, higher power than a, uh, 15 through 22. Now then you have RPT. Let's go up here. Now this is the same 15 through 22 channel with an offset. So if you wanna use a repeater, again, when I say repeater two, that is 462.575 with an offset of plus five megahertz. So I could use a local repeater, okay? And you can't do that on a normal blister pack, Walmart, GMRS radio because you can't set the offset. So you'll go through RPT one through eight, which is 15 through 22 with an offset. Then there's a DIY one through 24. Now that may be, I'm not exactly sure, the DIY one through 24 may be um, that you could uh, set your own parameters under, maybe adjust the power, adjust the offset, and stuff like that. Whereas a standard RPT channel is uh, you know, standardized for frequency. So you have those, okay? But for the majority, if I were to go in my local area to repeater two, this is just, this is just me, they call it the Fort Pierce 575, and then I went in, and I went first to the transmit DCS, uh, CTCSS 141.3, and then I went to the offset, which would be plus, in my situation, or my area, direction, plus, and then I would set the offset to uh, zero, five megahertz. Now right there, and in that situation, you can see I can key up right here, WRCU 707. Okay, I just keyed up that repeater. So in the blink of an eye, you can program in to hear the tone, the offset on the uh, certain channel because that 575 is gonna be all over the United States. That, that same repeater two channel is used in many parts of the country. It's just the tone that changes. That's all you have to know. 
There's a flashlight up top. The flashlight gives you a solid, a blink, and an off. You also have FM radio for FM broadcast. Great for an emergency if you want to listen to FM broadcast in your area. And NOAA weather radio, okay? Um, and if you hold this, you get a little alarm, which I don't know if that's transmitting that or what. But uh, overall, there's a lot of key functions that you can do by holding certain keys. See, I just turned the voice off that way. If I hold red, it's scanning. So now it'll scan all the channels, okay? So a lot of the stuff can be accessed from the front. You will see here the step size, so you can hit menu. Let's stop the scanning. Okay, now I don't know how to stop scanning. If I hit menu and one, that should be step size. If I hit menu, if I hit menu and zero, that's squelch. So you see it's got the keypad here. It'll give you quick settings on here. So, you know, uh, a, a lot better that way than another type of radio I can show you that won't have any functions in the front that is exclusively programmable and you can't use anything on the front. So that's another type of radio. That's why I like this TID. It's pretty cool. Okay, so there you have it. An overview, which is honest. I think these radios are built very solid. When you squeeze on them, they don't creak. That was my finger, by the way. They don't creak. The antenna will come off with a little Allen screw in the top, and you can unscrew that, and it is a SMA um, female on the top of it. SMA female, so if you have an SMA antenna, you want an SMA male, and if you want increased range for the three watts that you have, you can go like this. Talking about the Compact Tenna Scan 3, something like this with the appropriate adapter. On the top, this does amateur ham and GMRS at a very low SWR and 800, 900 megahertz. So the Compact Tenna, we had them on the podcast, Dr. Jack, you can check out those podcasts and the videos I did and Compact Tenna sent me some new stuff for CB and some others. Stay tuned, it's coming, videos are gonna be happening. But something like this on each end, through a repeater with two radios, if you had a compact antenna on each end, or whatever GMRS antenna you want, you're talking, you can probably bridge the gap 50, 60 miles on something that you just purchased the license without having to study for it. I think that's a great thing. GMRS is in between CB and ham radio if you're not general mobile radio service. You'll get some guys on there that are hams that want to really regulate this and they'll ask you for permission. You got to ask them for permission to use the repeaters. Sometimes you get on the repeaters, man, you just talk and just do your normal thing. Don't sound like a CB or give your identification, follow some simple rules, and you can be on GMRS. And you don't have to do repeaters. You could use this Jeep clubs. You could use this farms. You could use this for preppers or, or, or emergency operations, radio to radio, okay? You'd want to use the simplex GMRS channels, which is a chart online. The link is in the description. It shows you what channels are the high power channels up to 50 watts max that are not limited to half a watt so you don't break the laws and use that between amongst a, a bunch of people and, and you know have your own little GMRS thing for your hunting trips or your Jeep clubs or whatever. So if you want to get something better than CB, which I love CB, don't get me wrong, GMRS is the next best thing. Thank you to TID Radio for sending these. I hope this was a very in-depth review on what you get and um, just a couple things that you need to know to use this. So, 7-3, more videos are on the way. This is KJ4YZI.